you have the right to remain silent or whatever you say shall be used against you in a court of law ladies and gentlemen many of us are very familiar with that statement that is always given by a police officer when he or she comes to apprehend you to present you to court telling you that you should wait for your turn to answer to your charges in a court of justice instead of trying to defend yourself before him most of the cabinet secretaries have decided to remain silent because whatever they use whatever they say shall be used against them for about two times the senate has tried to engage members of the cabinet secretary to come for questioning and answering times in the in the senate session but they have declined and this has really enraged the senators and some of them did not have kind words to the senators especially the chief cabinet secretary Usalam Davadi and the man at the heart of a very controversial deal Davis Churchill take a look as far as question number 18 is concerned we received a letter last evening in fact this morning that uh, the CS in charge of foreign affairs and diaspora affairs is out of the country on delegated duties and therefore he will not be able to be with us this morning for purpose of responding to question number 18 as question number 59 79 78 and 79 these are four questions that have been directed to the CS Treasury again a communication was received uh, yesterday indicating that the CS had prior arrangements in regard to COP28 being held in Dubai and therefore he is not available. The Prime Cabinet Secretary has alerted Senate this morning. The Cabinet Secretary at the National Treasury has alerted the Senate this morning. Mr. Speaker, it should also occur to this House that this is not the first time the Prime Cabinet Secretary is failing to appear before this House. And, Mr. Speaker, if this does not imply attitude, then what does? The Cabinet Secretary has an attitude about this House. He thinks, Mr. Speaker, that the House is waiting for him so that this morning it discovers that he's not around. He had a seven-day window during which he knew he was going to travel or he was traveling, he should have informed us. This is the time for now us to sanction the Prime Cabinet Secretary so that he respects the House of Equity that represents the 47 counties of Kenya. Okay. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't make any sense. I was looking forward because we have a serious controversy in this country about the G2G deal. I wanted to look the CS energy in his eyes and ask him those questions that I've written down here, Mr. Speaker. But he has run away. And this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this is becoming a habit, even in the committees. My chair of uh, uh, the housing committee has just elucidated what we're going through in the, in the committees of, of the House. Because, Mr. Speaker, you invite a governor to answer questions about his own people. The people of uh, uh, Jericho, Lumumba, Imaringo were in the committee yesterday waiting to ask questions through their senator to the governor of Nairobi. He just says he has traveled. And my, uh, my suspicion, Mr. Speaker, is that this COP28 that is happening in Dubai is going to be one of the biggest scandals in this country. When the final list of the number of Kenyans who have gone to Dubai is published, we will be embarrassed as a country. The reason why I found this very interesting, ladies and gentlemen, is because I have, follow, have, I have always followed back during the campaigns to understand the thoughts and feelings of those who are campaigning whether it is Raila Molo Dinga or William Samuel Ruto, and have always crossed the borders to the UK in Chatham House because it was in Chatham House where William Ruto gave a speech 
that summarized what kind of government that he wanted to form. My suggestions are as follows. First, the national government should be reconfigured to comprise the national executive headed by the president and the official opposition headed by the leader of the party or coalition of parties whose presidential candidate wins the second highest votes. That is good for accountability. And secondly, it removes or mitigates the winner take all perception. The leader of the party which becomes second becomes the leader of the opposition and with his or her running mate automatically becomes members of parliament and assume the leadership of official opposition. This formula should apply at the county level as well. I further propose that with the leader of opposition taking leadership of the opposition in parliament, the deputy president should then take over the leadership of government business in parliament. This should be replicated at the county level by deputy governors. The Senate, we must make a decision to make the Senate the upper house. Thirdly, cabinet secretaries should be ex-official members of parliament and must attend sittings of parliament at least once a week and whenever required to answer questions on the floor of the house. This will remove the perception that there is a disconnect between the executive and the legislature. I however maintain that members of, members of cabinet should not be elected members of parliament. Uh, kindly take a look at most of these presidents or presidential candidates when they are invited to Chatham House and you see how they, 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 they articulate their policies, the foreign policies and the kind of government that they want. Because it is in Chatham House where the Western powers will be gauging who they want to work with. So when William Ruto was campaigning, he was invited to Chatham House and of course later Raila was also invited there. And William Ruto made a statement about cabinet secretaries and how he would wish that they go to parliament once in a while to answer to the concerns of citizens because the concerns of the citizens are always carried by the senators. So it is something that did not, you know, begin today. And then after ascending to the office, it was a presidential decree that the cabinet secretaries would be going to answer questions in the Senate and in the National Assembly. The opposition did not take it kindly and they even they, they, they opposed it and even went to court but the court found nothing wrong with it. And today, barely a few months after this has started, the CSS are afraid of facing the parliamentarians. And as Sifuna is stating there, he wanted to look into the face of Davis Churchill and ask him questions about the oil gulf deal. Kindly subscribe to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Click the notification bell and like our videos. You can also share them. Let me tell you something. If I were in Davis Church's shoes and Mdavadi's shoes, I would have escaped or boycotted the Senate session. And I will tell you why. You know, Churchill is at the heart of a very controversial deal. And this deal is touching William Samoy Ruto. Because remember, Anne Jerry articulated that when she got someone who could take her to the powers that be, she was told that the kind of deal that she was requesting could only be affected by either Davis Churchill or the big man himself. The big man in this sense was William Samuel Ruto. And she says that when she went to Davis Churchill's office, she found Oscar Sudi. And Oscar Sudi was representing William Samuel Ruto. And you know that as we speak today, the mystery around this oil deal has not been unraveled. It's, it's, it still remains unpacked. We are waiting for the truth. 
So you expect David's Churchill to go and sit there to be roasted by people like Edward Sefuna on a matter that he knows very well he will fumble. He will not. And this is the reason why for a second uh, time running, David Churchill has decided not to go there. And I think it must have been an instruction from the president himself because there is no need of subjecting David Churchill to a situation where he is not going to answer because he knows very well that the oil deal is one that is, is, is very dirty. And when it is touching state house, then you better boycott than go there to expose the president. Because if he goes there, he will expose the president. He will embarrass the president. He will even embarrass himself because there are questions that he won't be able to answer. When it is crystal clear that money is getting into some people's pockets, and he knows very well that it could have been the, 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 the big men and women up there who are getting this money, then you'd rather not go. And so I have a feeling that the first reason is that he was instructed, even Davadi and, and Churchill and those CSS were instructed to boycott because it's going to be a heated debate. And when you speak, you expose yourself, you expose the entire team that is eating. Number two, it is not very easy to defend this government. The Prime Cabinet Secretary will go there because he will, be in, he will be there in his capacity as the man who is in charge of all the Cabinet Secretaries. And he will be trying to defend things like the El Nino, oil deal. He will try and take cover to cover all the CSS, something that is not very easy because Kenyans are not fools. Kenyans have access to the internet, to the international media. They know what is happening. When you try to defend the, 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 the prices of oil, they know that just in the neighborhood, the prices have gone down. They understand so well that the meteorological department had said that they would ha we would have El Nino, but the president came and said that there would not be El Nino. People are dying. And so it is not very easy to defend this government. For Musalem Davadi, he needs to recollect himself. That is why he ran away. I know they are they, they, they have gone there to to for a, for some climate summit or something. But that just came as a reprieve so that they can also get enough time to gather more courage to gather some pieces of evidence. But it is not very easy to defend a corrupt government. How, for example, will you defend the the, the, the finance bill twenty twenty three when you? just impose taxes to, 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 to the basic commodities. And that's why I think that it was not very easy for the CSS. The other thing, and this, the Senate and the, the National Assembly must blame themselves, especially those who are on the government side. They have failed to exercise independence. They always dance to the tune of the executive. And so they have... Uh, showcased their weakness that as a house because remember the government has got two three branches we have the executive which is headed by the president of course we have the judiciary that is headed by the the, the president of the judiciary who is uh, madame Kome, and of course we have the legislative arm of the government which is the national assembly headed by uh, moses wetangula and the senate headed by amazon king but both the National Assembly and the Senate have manifested weaknesses that they can take instructions from the executive instead of exercising their autonomy that has been given to them by, the, by, by, by our constitution, by the people of Kenya. And so when they invite the, the, the ministers, cabinet secretaries, the cabinet secretaries will not go and there's nothing that they will do. because. Those cabinet secretaries are direct appointees of the president. And the president gives these instructions to the parliament at will. He controls every independent institution in this country. Instead of the government, instead of parliament, standing out to be counted that they can be independent, they cannot take instructions from the executive, they have always fallen short of glory 
of that autonomy. And so when the CSS decide not to obey their orders, they can only but have themselves to blame. Because respect is earned. It does not come automatic, automatically. They have failed to earn that respect. They have failed to demonstrate that they are a honest institution, a honest branch of the government that can be trusted. If they had remained independent in times of crisis when the, the, the people who elected them wanted them to stand for them against the punitive taxes that have been, you know, instructed from the IMF and the, and, and, and the, and the World Bank, they refused and they sided by the, by the government. So that respect, William Ruto has realized that these are my puppets, I can manipulate them. And the CSS know very well that there is nothing that the Senate can do. And this is the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why the CSS refused to attend those sessions. Yet I am telling you and I'm proving that this is something that William Ruto has set had set his eyes on and he wanted the government side to go there. They will only go there when there is something good that they can talk about. For example, you remember the world coin when Kithura Kediki decided to act very fast and uh, he suspended the, their mission and they were they were they were escorted back. And when he, he moved in very fast to, to, to remove the backlog at, the, at, 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 at Nyaya House where uh, the IDs were piling there, not collected. When you go there, the, 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 the officers wanted to bribe a bribe before they give you the services. And he acted very fast. During such moments, the, you will see Kithuri Kendiki going there because he is brave. And as I have always said in this channel, I've always quoted from the Bible, that a Russia's man is as brave as a lion. But one who is implicated, a sinner, as the Bible puts it, or the guilty ones, will always be fleeing even when no one is pursuing them. They will always be running away. So, Davis Churchill is running away. Muslim is running away because they know very well that this government cannot be defended. They are Utakaza Macho too, like it's not very easy. The last one, Davis Churchill saw how Murkomen found a very difficult moment in, in the Senate when his brother, the Nadi Ch Senator Cherergai, put him to task to explain things until Cherergai was, 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 was kicked away from, from the house. And Cherergai did not stop there. He exposed just how corrupt Murkomen is and there were allegations that he takes bribes from the Chinese contractors. So Davis Churchill does not want to, you know, face that panel. And what will happen is that they will go to the Senate sessions after William Ruto has given instructions to senators on the kind of question to be asked, and, and especially the government side. They will be told to be lenient to the CSS so that they don't embarrass them, they don't embarrass the president, they don't expose even that which we do not know. And that is why I'm telling you that these people have been using the policy of you have the right to remain silent because as it is they are silent on this matter we are only feeding on uh, what we've heard from maybe okia mutata and jerry and all the other people but for the css they fear coming to to fumble before the senate i know when things have been smoothened when money shall have been oiled because i know those senators some of them might just take you know, something small or instructions from the government, then you will see the CSS going there. And they will be a little bit lenient to them. I don't know what you think, ladies and gentlemen, but these are instructions from the top so that the CSS cannot go there. And they don't care because the Senate, the National Assembly, have proved that they are never independent. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.